Whether it's potty training kids or your furry friends, it's often a stressful and frustrating experience, especially for first timers. So today, I'm here to guide you through the ins and outs of successful potty training, specifically for your corgi puppy. These concepts and principles can translate to other breeds. So if you own another breed, don't click away. These tips can help you on your journey with your dog. Before we get started, I just wanted to welcome you to our channel where we talk all things corgis. If you love corgis and want to learn more about the breed and training tips, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. We try to make each video as informative and entertaining as possible so you can give your dog their best life. Potty training is one of the first things to work on starting on day one. Paired with crate training and establishing good habits, once a routine is set, stress and anxiety over accidents will be a thing of the past. Yay. You'll need to have some patience as success will not come overnight, especially if your puppy is younger. So the good thing is that dogs do grow up fast, so in a matter of a few weeks, you should be making significant progress. Oh, look at the little baby. Oh. And now look at the big baby. For Gandalf, we brought him home in the beginning of May, and by July, which was about three months, he was nearly fully potty trained. And just as a disclaimer, just because a dog is potty trained, that does not mean that they are housebroken. What I mean by that is just because they don't poop or pee everywhere, doesn't mean they won't chew on your favorite couch and tear apart your favorite slippers. Comment below if you'd like me to follow up with a video on housebreaking your dog. To begin, you'll need to start with a crate and a puppy pen. I'll link in the description below on the crates and pen that we used. If you want more information on crate training, be sure to check out the video also in the description below. In terms of puppy pads, it didn't work for us. We tried it initially and Gandalf ended up playing on it more than actually using it to pee on. Also, I've heard that from other owners that if you condition your dog to pee inside on a puppy pad, the dog will continue to pee on it even when the pad is removed. So, you actually might accidentally train your dog to be conditioned to pee inside the house. Just know that whatever location you've chosen to encourage your dog to go bathroom in, that will most likely be the area where they associate the bathroom to be. Ooh, a pee -pee. If you live in an apartment and only can access an indoor or patio space for your puppy, then go for it. Otherwise, I would advise not going in this route. For Gandalf, we tried the pad for a few days and quickly abandoned that. We switched over to encourage him to go to the backyard. Nowadays, he treats our backyard as if it's inside, so he will not go bathroom until we take him outside in the front yard. This is great as we have young kids that love to run around barefoot, and we have peace of mind that they are not stomping on pee and poop. So back to the supplies. What you'll need is a crate, pen, and some tasty treats as rewards. And lastly, you'll need to get a pet enzyme spray, which will remove any remnants of accidents that will happen in the house. We're gonna break down the fundamentals of potty training with the three S's, space, schedule, and supervision. A puppy will not soil their den unless they simply cannot hold it anymore. This may sound cruel to some, you were cruel, cruel. but the key to success in potty training is confinement. What do I mean by that? Your dog will not want to soil their bed or the place where they rest. Especially in the early stages of puppyhood, freedom needs to be limited. Every time your dog has an accident, it reinforces the idea that it's okay to go in that space again. So, to set your puppy up for success, you'll want to establish a space where you can guarantee that your puppy will succeed. This means using a crate or a designated playpen area. The objective is to make your pup associate this space as their den, a clean and comfortable place. As your puppy grows and proves that they can hold their bladder, you can gradually give them more freedom. But remember, free reign in the house too soon will almost guarantee accidents in random corners. For Gandalf, in his first three months, his den space was limited to his crate and pen. He graduated to a larger crate and pen as he got bigger. He was given free reign over time on one side of the house at about six months, and then the whole first floor by the end of the first year while under supervision. If we had to leave for an extended period of time, we would still pen him with his bed and crate. After his second year, he graduated to have full reign of the house as he was fully housebroken by then. Even to this day, he still enjoys his crate from time to time. Use your judgment and gradually give your dog freedom. 
If you give too much, take a step back. If they are succeeding, go ahead and give a little bit more freedom. Just know that if you establish ground rules now, you'll be able to trust your dog for the rest of their lives, so it's worth taking the time to do it properly. In addition to establishing their den space, you'll want to establish their bathroom space. Whether it's in your backyard, a patch of grass, or an outside space on a walk, you'll want to praise them abundantly and reward them when they go in the right space. Now, let's talk about understanding your corgi's needs. Puppies have tiny bladders, so knowing their bathroom schedule is key. The good thing is that dogs tend to grow up fairly fast in a matter of months, so those bladders do get pretty big quickly. In the early stages, your corgi puppy will need frequent bathroom breaks. We're talking about every couple of hours, so be prepared for regular outings. In the first month, I would wake up in the middle of the night to take Gandalf out from his crate. It was the worst, half asleep, trying to get him to pee, which would sometimes take up to 15 minutes. Tired, very tired. After a month, we found that he was able to sleep through the night without needing to go to the bathroom. As your puppy grows, you can gradually stretch out their bathroom breaks into longer periods. Their ability to hold it will improve over time. It's important to keep track of your puppy's milestones and adjust the schedule accordingly. Remember, patience is key. For a typical block in a day, we'll start off with a bathroom break after releasing from the crate. We'll follow up with feeding, play, and exercise. We'll also do some training. Once Gandalf was ready to rest, we'd take him out real quick again for a bathroom break before crating or penning him. This would occur throughout the day. I had the privilege to be able to work from home when Gandalf was a puppy, so I was able to monitor him throughout the day and give him those breaks over two hour intervals. However, on certain weeks, I would be traveling for work, so mom had to rush home from her lunch breaks to give him a potty break. Therefore, each block was approximately four to five hours in between. She made her best effort to play and exercise and train Gandalf during the hour that she had. He would then need to be confined for another four to five hours for the afternoon. While this was not ideal, Gandalf learned to enjoy his space. As an adult dog, this is Gandalf's schedule. We go on a 7 a.m. walk, 1 p.m. walk, 4.30 p.m. walk, and 10 p.m. walk. It doesn't have to be exact, but we try to keep our schedules to those four potty breaks as a minimum. Once in a while, Gandalf will cue us that he needs to go if he drank a little bit too much water, so we'll give him an extra outing. Finally, let's discuss supervision. This is perhaps one of the most critical aspects of potty training. You must keep a close eye on your puppy, especially during the early stages of potty training. If you can't supervise them, they should be in their designated den space. When your corgi is out of their designated area, be purposeful with your time. Play and train your corgi during this period and keep an eye for any clues that they need a bathroom break. Watch for cues like sniffing, circling, or restlessness. These are usually signals that it's time for a bathroom break. If you can't monitor them closely, put them on a leash or lead so that they can't wander off. That way, if you sense that there are signs that they need to go potty, you can quickly take your pup out. Every time your dog succeeds, give lots of praise and a treat. Every time your pup has an accident, bring them out immediately to the designated potty area and encourage them to finish there. Clean up the mess inside with an enzyme spray. You'll want to make sure that all the remnants be cleaned up, no, clean it up or your pup will associate that spot as their bathroom space. Establish a routine and take your corgi out at regular intervals. Remember, supervision and consistency go hand in hand when it comes to potty training success. Create a designated space where your puppy can succeed. Establish a bathroom schedule that fits their age and needs and closely supervise them to catch those important cues. With patience, consistency, and these essential strategies, you'll be well on your way to a successfully potty trained corgi puppy. Remember, every puppy is unique, so adapt these principles to suit your furry friend. Thanks for joining us today. If you found this information helpful, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more valuable dog training tips. Stay tuned for our next video.